meiosis. Meiosis is the type of cell division that makes gametes, which are egg and sperm. So why do we need meiosis? Meiosis allows two parents to each contribute a haploid number of chromosomes to their offspring. In other words, here's this parent sheep, and I don't know how many chromosomes sheep have. Let's say they have 40 chromosomes, and this one has 40 also. You want their baby. Bah. Oh, man, that's awful. Now I have to try to draw it without see when it comes back. Anyway, you have this baby here. Hi, baby sheep. Oh, that is an ugly sheep. Anyway, the baby should have 46 chromosomes, too. So in order, oh, look at that. That is a really ugly sheep. In order for all of them to have, whoops, sorry. Let's pretend sheep have 40 chromosomes. So mommy has 40, daddy has 40, and baby has 40. So in order for the baby to have the same number of chromosomes as mom and dad, the mom and dad have to make gametes that have half that, 20 and 20 together to make 40. There we go. The egg with 40 and the sperm with 40. If it were a human, it would be 46, uh, sorry, 23. Oh man, I'm messing this up, aren't I? So your egg should have 23 chromosomes. Sperm should have 23 chromosomes to make a human that has 46. And if you're a sheep who has 40 chromosomes in the pretend world, um, then the eggs would have 20 and the sperm would have 20 and together they'd make 40. So it's a fundamental basis of sexual reproduction, uh, meiosis that is. Two haploid gametes are brought together through fertilization to form a diploid zygote. And here we go, the fertilization movie again. Yay! So you have a haploid egg and a haploid sperm together making a diploid zygote. And so with this picture, this is some um, species that I don't know about. Anyway, the haploid number is three chromosomes. And the diploid number, once the baby, the zygote is formed, so 2n equals six chromosomes. So one is three, and 2n is six. This ensures that the offspring will have the proper diploid number of chromosomes for its species. So we're going to look at how you separate out those chromosomes. So through the process of meiosis, the gene combinations of offspring are not identical to a parent. This is a strong force in the process of dun, 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 evolution, the process by which species change over time. So it's really super important to have variation in sexually reproducing organisms so that um, the ones that are best fit for that particular environment will survive. Gives the greatest chance of somebody surviving a change in the environment. So what happens before any type of cell division? Same thing as mitosis, um, chromosome replication during interphase. So that stuff's all the same. So you have an unduplicated chromosome. Um, so this is, remember, G1, and then you've got S, and then you've got G2 in the cell cycle. So during the synthesis um, phase of this is all interphase, right? These three things, G1, S, and G2, those are all interphase. So during interphase, especially, specifically that is the synthesis phase, you go from an unduplicated to a duplicated chromosome. Um, DNA synthesis occurs, and that's going to be the topic of a unit two units from now. Here's our movie of it. And so here's a movie of the whole thing. Let's start from the beginning. You've got four chromosomes. That's your diploid number. Then you replicate during synthesis. You do this funky thing. Anyway, that's meiosis one. Here's meiosis two. You end up with two chromosomes. So again, you started out with two n equal four. Duplicate them. Do this funky stuff. Separate them out. That's meiosis one. Here's meiosis two. You end up with n equals two. So you've separated your chromosomes. You've uh, split them in half. And you do that by two cell divisions, meiosis one and meiosis two. Bum, ba -dum, bum. So that's the overview of meiosis. I could just watch this all day, but we have more to do. Bum, ba -bum, meiosis 2, four cells at the end. So there are two stages to meiosis. There's meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. The original cell is diploid, 2n. In us, the 2n number is 46. We have 46 chromosomes. Four daughter cells are produced, and they are all haploid. 1n. And so for us, the 1n number is 23. For humans, it's different in chimpanzees and, I don't know, monarch butterflies or whoever else. So this is called reduction division because the number of chromosomes per cell is cut in half. It's reduced from diploid to haploid through the separation of 
the matching ones, the homologous chromosomes. Daughter cells contain half the number of chromosomes as the original cell. So this is what produces eggs and sperm. And it occurs in the testes in males. And when it does, it's called not just meiosis, there's a special name for it, spermatogenesis. Genesis is the first book in the Christian Bible. Um, actually, I guess, um, the Jewish Bible too, right? Is that true? Yep, that's true. Um, <laughs> I'm so pathetic. Anyway, um, so this is the beginning of, in other words, to make sperm. And it occurs in the ovaries in females, um, which is ootogenesis, or how do you really pronounce this? I think it's aogenesis, maybe? Anyway, um, that's the same thing as meiosis, except in females. So in people, um, we start with 46 double-stranded chromosomes, which is 2n. The first division, meiosis 1, separates out homologous chromosomes. So you actually end up with the haploid number right there. So you get 23 double-stranded chromosomes. So you're already at 1n, but they're still double-stranded, so you have to separate them out from there. So the second division separates the sister chromatids. So you still end up with 23 chromosomes, but they are now single-stranded, and they are still 1n. So this page right here, you can put a star next to all this stuff. Um, we're going to go over it in detail, but here's, here's the, the big picture. So in the first division, you separate out your homologous chromosomes, so you become haploid right there. And in the second division, you separate out the sister chromatids, so you're already haploid, but you become single-stranded. So here's an overview again. So here you have just two. Um, your diploid number is only two, which is kind of strange, but... Anyway, just for the purposes of what we're doing here. So there's gene X, and these are homologous chromosomes. That means they have the same genes but different alleles. So these things are sister chromatids. They have the same genes, same alleles, um, and, of course, crossover you haven't learned about yet, and it hasn't occurred yet, so they're the same for now. So homologous chromosomes separate in meiosis 1, and therefore different alleles separate. So those two things come apart. So... Let's go backwards. So you end up just taking this. And what we're going to do now is show this is meiosis 1 when it comes apart, and then we're going to follow just this one. So you're down to one chromosome now. And in meiosis 2, um, you separate those out. So only one hom homologue of each chromosome is present in the cell. And in meiosis 2, you separate the sister chromatids. So here's an overview of the whole thing. In this case, 2n, there's some species out there where 2n equals 4. They have four chromosomes in their adults or in their non-gametes. Um, in meiosis 1, you separate out the homologous chromosomes. So these two, maybe that came from dad and that came from mom, and that one had come from your dad and that one had come from your mom. When you're making your eggs or your sperm, you're actually looking at grandparents' DNA. So anyway, in meiosis 1, you separate out the homologous chromosomes. So you get one of the big ones and one of the little ones here and one of the big ones and one of the little ones here. So you've separated out the homologous chromosomes. Meiosis 2 separates out these sister chromatids. You separate out that one from that one. And so each cell ends up with unduplicated chromosomes. So you separate out your sister chromatids. Homologous separate the homologous chromosomes here. So you've got, um, you have one copy of each pair. So one big one, one little one. So your n equals 2. And actually over here, your n equals 2. So you're already haploid at this stage. So this is diploid over here. You've separated out your homologous chromosomes, so you're haploid here and you're haploid here. The difference between here and here is that the, they are still duplicated. The chromosomes are still duplicated. So duplicated chromosomes. And these are unduplicated duplicated chromosomes. So homologous chromosomes separate or homologs separate. And sister chromatids separate. I just said that. <laughs> They're diploid and um, duplicated here. You should write all this down, pause it, because I'm probably going too fast. And they are haploid and duplicated here, and haploid and unduplicated over here. 
Okay, so quick quiz time. Homologous chromosomes are separated in meiosis 1. Sister chromatids are separated in meiosis 2. Cells are haploid at the end of, actually, at the end of meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. But this is where they start to, that's where they become haploid. They're just still continuing on haploid there. The diploid number is restored in fertilization. A zygote is made by fertilization. Haploid cells with duplicated chromosomes are formed at the end of meiosis 1. Haploid cells with unduplicated chromosomes are formed by the end of meiosis 2. And that's the end of my story. The next thing we'll do is look at the, the details of all this stuff.